All right, gang, Sean here with Sean and Don Ventures. I know what you're thinking. That's not a van. And you are absolutely right. This is my 2012 Toyota Tacoma. And as we've been waiting for my van, I started upgrading this. It was stock TRD about four months ago. Um, during this time, I've lifted it, put some steps on it, new wheels, new tires, murdered out the window, had a full polish on it, new bumper, and a couple other things that I've been doing getting it ready for overlanding um, and really getting ready to complement our van life here. So today we're gonna to talk about the Max Modular um, cab height bed rack with the roof nest Falcon on it and the Gladiator um, tonneau cover. R originally I had the backflip co cover on this and after kind of looking at the, uh, the how the roof rack would come on and per the instructions, it showed that it wouldn't open uh, appropriately. So I decided to go ahead and mix that up and get a new cover since I was already so far into the, the build process and I really wanted everything to function there. So what we have here are items that are gonna complement us going off-road with this, but also complement our van life that we have planning uh, that we're gonna do. So if you're interested in anything that we're doing or kind of understanding how does all this kind of play in both worlds, even our home world, go ahead and like and subscribe our channel. We'll start posting content on that. We'll show you how we use them, how we use them on our everyday lives, how we use them when we're out with the truck, how we use them when we're out in the van, um, and just different options. Um, there is no really perfect setup for someone. It's only what's perfect for you, um, for your lifestyle. And so my goal is to actually kind of provide how we plan on using it, showing you the things that we feel are most ideal for our lifestyle as we're moving around. And if that fits with you, maybe you want to consider these same products as well. So stick along here. And once again, if you want to learn more, make sure you like and subscribe. Folks, it's really bright out here, so I hope that you can see this. So originally we had the backflip uh, cover on this and when I read the instructions, these, I, and I verified online um, whether this said this online and it didn't say it online, but it did say it in the printed instructions and I'll pop that up here, that my tonneau cover, my original backflip tonneau cover that would flip over and then mount up there would not fit, uh, would not function or open with the, the max rack on there. I'm not quite sure if that's true or not or just a misprint, but it was enough of a concern for me to sit there and say, you know what, let me get a different cover and kind of go from there. So this is what the original bracket that they sent. And if we look about how this comes here, you can see how it kind of stands off and how the cover wouldn't really set flat at all. You know, you might get a little bit of leakage of water. I think it would still work. Um, but once again, I spent so much money kind of getting this thing where it was. I didn't want to take the risk of not having it just right for me. So they're going to send me a cover or a, a bracket that's more mounts this way, which will allow the, uh, the tonneau cover to still function, but also love, allow the, ruck, the, the rack to have stability there. So stick around. Well, the best laid plans don't always go according to plan. <clears throat> so as I was putting this together. I was videoing some of the key points here um, that I thought were important, just sharing what they would be with you. I went back and I was looking at those videos and realized that my audio wasn't working. I'm gonna get my coffee here. So I'm gonna play those videos in the background and I'm just gonna highlight the, so you'll probably see them up in one of these corners, not sure where I'm gonna put it yet. Um, but I'll just kinda talk about the highlights of the assembly process for uh, this rack system and my thoughts on it thus far. So one thing that to note is I'm on a platform here. It's four by eight platform. I recommend getting something elevated if you can, right? It's, it's installed upside down. It goes way easier if you can get it on a counter height on some saw horses or something uh, for your install. If you're doing it on the ground, you can still make it work. Just, it's just a little cumbersome that way because um, you have to slide things in and just try to get everything to fit. So that's my first tip. The other thing is I don't think the instructions are that great. Um, there's literally one page and really no visual representation to what what to do here. Um, so you kind of have to, you know, it, it's, it's fairly intuitive once you start doing it, um, but it's, it takes a little bit and if you're not very mechanical, um, it might be kind of confusing for you if, or if you're brand new, you don't do a lot of research on things. So one thing to note is here, 
is that all their parts come with a parts bag and they're labeled to what they're needed. So Max uh, sidebar hardware kit. So that's my side box here, which is gonna go on this opposite side. Um, hardware kit and then like, let's see what this one says. Uh, long SS button heads. Um, that's all it tells you. If it corresponded to some sort of visual image in there, it would be a little bit easier for people to track. And I just think really maybe one to two photos just showing some of the, the, uh, the primary connection methods would be easier for people. So uh, a couple other things that were listed here. So it was confusing when this order came in because it shipped from two different sources um, with three tracking numbers, but four packages showed up, which threw me way off. So these aluminum crossbars here actually come from a different uh, part of their factory, or maybe it's, it's just a partnership that they have, not sure, but these come separate um, than everything else that, that arrives. And so just be aware that you need to really look at your entire, like make sure you have all the boxes um, and, and inspect everything before you start your assembly day, because otherwise you might do what I did and realize I'm missing pieces here and, and I thought I had everything complete. So no big deal there. Once I understood that, it was like, okay, here's how I do it. The other thing that um, was, I think the complicated part of the build was really just how to make this assembly process, this process work. And it's not really complicated, it's just more the process here. So this slides into this channel and there's these T-nuts here and they slide in this direction and then you secure them. So what they recommended in the, in, in the instructions, so you have some here in these center point pieces and then you have them here as well. What they recommended is that you kind of slide these T-nuts in and then you try to get the thread on them from the inside and, and make that connection. I, I found that to be really hard to do, <laughs> like really hard to find the right uh, bolt. So. Um, I slid these all back and I would start them with the bolt and the nut and then get them kind of slid into the channel and then slide them into place and, and make the connection and then tighten them down from there. That worked way easier. So once I kind of figured out, okay, here's the best way of doing this, ignore what they're saying in the instructions, kind of pre-thread them, get them slid in, then tighten them down. That made it go pretty quickly there. Um, so I, I would recommend that as the biggest thing there. The other portion here is that, you know, you don't tighten anything really down until you get it to your rig yet. So this is all kind of loose. So these are all just finger tight right now. I can back them off. I did for transportation purposes. Um, I did like when I flip this back over by transportation, I've tightened down one of these heads per side so that when we flip it over to get it to the truck, um, everything's not going to slide apart there. Also, since I am doing the side box here, which I know you can't quite see behind me, but you'll see it in other videos, these two support uh, rails, um, usually there's one per side. I went ahead and just put um, two per side, so I have double the mounting options over here, and then I'll have the box on that side um, as we go. Once again, um, the other part that was confusing for the backflip uh, uh, tonic cover I had was that in the instructions that I got, not what's online, it said your backflip won't operate, like you can't open it. And I was like, well, what the hell's the point? <laughs> I, I need my tonic cover to op open. So that's why I went to a different uh, tonic cover. However, I think that it will open. So um, I think as I was looking at their brackets, I go, I think this would technically open, even though their instructions said it won't function. So just bear that in mind as well. Um, other than that, um, it all kind of bolted together fairly easy. I think it's a really good system, very modular. You can see how it can adjust to almost any pickup. Um, I have the long bed, so this is the long length, and they have the, sh the shorter bed length. So that would just mean like when they're shipping these out, these pieces here would be different if you had a, sh a shorter bed. Um, and if you want for the longer option, this is what you get. So more to come here. Next part up, we'll get it uh, hooked up to the truck. We'll get the side box put on. We'll give our final review from there. Thanks. Woo hoo, guys. It's a simile day. It's a day early. It's actually Labor Day right now. So depending on when you watch this, Labor Day of 2021, right? And I've been waiting for these brackets for my tonic cover. 
um, and since I switched out tonneau covers, and so they came one day early, so I'm pretty excited about getting this going. So let's talk about the sequence of operation here. So today's goal, we're going to remove the tonneau cover so that these new brackets can go in that support my, my cab height rack, right? And so what I've been waiting for is to determine, do I potentially need to cut any of this channel wherever these brackets are going to go or will I have enough room? So I was waiting for the brackets to get here and it appears I'm going to have enough room. So if I kind of eyeball this, this is where the edge of the bed liner is. It looks like it gives me at least about two inches clearance back here all the way to the edge. What I didn't realize until I ordered this, uh, this tonneau cover is that your rails on your Toyota actually they, they narrow as they go. So they're straight this way, but they taper in as they go. Um, and when I got the instructions and I saw that written down, I'm, I looked at it, I said, holy cow, I've owned this thing for 10 years, never realized that it was not just a straight line straight down. It actually tapers in. So based on what I'm seeing here, I'll probably be okay to go here. So the sequence of operation today, if everything goes according to plan, which we know how that typically goes, is, uh, we're going to dry fit the rack out here in a second, kind of where I want to place it. I'm going to put some tape on one side, and then I'll do a measurement of where I want the edge of my bracket to be. Um, and I'll, I'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll then take off the tonneau cover, just loosen the bolt and flip it up a little bit so that I can slide uh, the catch in for the bracket and get that kind of to where I want it. And then we'll start dry fitting everything back together. If there's anything, I'm not planning on recording all that. If there's anything that comes up where I'm like, this is important, I'll turn the camera on and just kind of show you those sequencing. Um, after we get the rack on, we get it all tightened um, and put together, we'll then take out the roof nest rooftop tent, which is really exciting for me. Get that up here, see how that all fits. We'll wrap it up at the end, put a little bow on this video and call it good and hopefully important information for anyone that's uh, looking to maybe do a similar uh, install on their Toyota. So once again, stick with us here. If there's anything important, I'll make sure to turn the camera on for you. All right, gang, let's just recap where we're at here. So I had to take my Tonda cover off, my Gator Max one off, or Gator Tracks one off, and I had to reposition. I'm glad I actually measured everything where the support rail is on the Toyota and realized that I actually had to remove my Tonda cover to get the furthest forward one up there. And so what I did is I took a metal square. I recommend this because you get measure one side and then you can come off your side of your cab here and you can get to the edge and figure out where you need your other side because I had to tighten these two positions down first, like securely tie them down because when my tonneau cover comes in, I won't have any access to this whatsoever. Um, I, I potentially could get underneath um, with some sort of wrench and maybe get this and make a, a micro adjustment, but it would be a real pain in the butt. Um, from there, I have a side mount back here. And if you're wondering for my particular tonneau cover, the way it goes, it's, uh, it's cab height rack, brace, tonneau cover, brace, cab, hat, cab rack, brace, tonneau cover brace. So if you're trying to figure out where you put your slides, which one is the sequential, this is the way to do it. I've loosely uh, hand tightened these down. I, I want to say it was like 57 and a quarter inches there about from this far end to this far end, knowing that these are my anchor points and I can make all my micro adjustments on this side as needed. So next up, I'm going to get the tonneau cover put back on, get that fully secured. Once the tonneau cover is good, I'm going to start the process of getting the, the rack put on here and making all those adjustments. Stick with me. Okay, gang. Okay, gang. We just got everything mounted here um, and tightened down. So let me just kind of recap some things. Everything was put on loose. We mounted the side box here. I'm not quite sure about the side box, how I'm going to feel about it, because it has to be mounted in this top bracket, which I didn't realize um, until I got the instructions. So the three holes are in this point here and I got a rooftop tent coming on which is going to happen next and what we're going to see here is I'm not sure how operational this is going to be regardless I think I can get it mounted just fine um, I might shim it if I want to I'm not quite sure yet we're going to see how it mounts up um, and then go from there so a couple things to recap everything was loose 
um, all the bolts, which is really critical, especially if you're gonna put this on. This comes assembled with all the bolts inside being very loose. That way you can actually manipulate it as you're, you're trying to get things tight. Um, small hands, little bolts, kind of make it a pain, but finally got there, then went through everything and tightened everything back, back down. So made things were spaced right, tightened it all down. Next up is the Roof Nest Falcon XL tent. I'm not gonna show you how that goes on just because there's tons of videos of that, but I'll recap at the end how it mounted, if there was any difficulties. We'll look at this, we'll look at everything one last time, and then we'll, we'll call it a, a video there. Well, folks, that is a wrap. And it was not as easy as I had hoped. So as you remember, this, this toolbox was mounted up here, and I was worried about this little app moving up and actually be able to clear this. And what I realized, and that's the one thing I, I don't like so much about the Voodoo, is that their instructions are a little vague. Um, they say you have to mount up here, and technically you may have to mount back up here, but I found two holes that were already in here with the, the square head. So I took it down after I already had it up here, took it back down, readjusted everything, had a secondary hole up here, and it works well. So it's just what I need. Tent went up super smooth. Um, you know, these things are pretty bulletproof, especially the roof nest version here. Instructions are great. Quality is great. Um, we're excited to get out there and uh, uh, get after it. So, if you like what you see, we're going to continue to build things out here on the Toyota. Uh, we're going to show you how this stuff can convert to our van life as well, especially the tent. we got some plans for that. So, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, like and subscribe. And as things come up, you can watch our videos on it. Thanks, guys.